Hi guys, I welcome you back to my channel. Being a wife is more than putting these two metals on your fingers. Being a wife is more than the 50 seconds Instagram reel you do with your bridal train. Being a wife is more than changing your name from mess to messes. Being a wife is more of a responsibility than a testimony. How then do you become a good wife? Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 going gives us a very detailed way that you can become the good wife that you have to be. So in this video, we'll be talking about the virtuous ones. Other versions say a wife of noble character. That is what we'll be discussing. We'll be taking it step by step and we'll be discussing it because God initiated marriage and he's the only one who teaches us how to marry well. You cannot marry well outside the Bible. I always tell you that you need to have a biblical marriage. And so for you to have a biblical marriage, you need to study the Bible. For you to be that woman, you need to study it and understand it and know what you are required to do, even as you are planning to get married or even as you are already a wife. So let's get right into it. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Who can find a virtuous and a capable wife? The first thing that it teaches us is that as a wife, my dear, you need to be found. Put yourself in a position where you'll be found. Even as you are a girlfriend, please don't start performing wifely duties as a girlfriend. Let the man come home. Let him do the necessary rights he's, do, he's supposed to do. Let him marry you. Let him find you. Because the second passage, she is more precious than rubies. You have no idea how valuable you are. And so you don't have to devalue yourself just because you want to be married. A lot of ladies go through a lot of things that they are not supposed to go through because they want to be married, because the society is putting pressure on them, and because they feel like I am aging and so I want to be married. Sweetheart, you are precious. And so you need to put yourself in a position where a man will make effort to come and find you and make you his wife. You have no idea the value you are going to add to the man's life because the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and favor before God. After creation, the God of perfection, the God who does everything right said, no, something is not right. Something is not good. Something is missing. And guess what? That thing is you. And so know how valuable you are. Know that you need to be found and just know that you are more precious than rubies. Verse 11 says that her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. Are you trustworthy? Are you reliable? Are you enriching your husband's life as a wife? Or you are rather bringing him headache? So if you want to be a virtuous woman, my dear, you have to behave in such a way that your husband can trust you and you are going to add up to his life. Don't forget you are a helper. And so if you call yourself a wife, sweetheart, you have to know that it is your responsibility to end the trust of your husband and to enrich his life greatly. Verse 12 says that she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. So even as you are married, even as you call yourself a wife, even as you are about to get married, know that you are supposed to bring your husband good and not harm. You are supposed to bring him peace, not some days of your life, but all the days of your life. Let's continue. Verse 13 says, she finds wool and flax and busily spends it. So, my dear, being a housewife is not biblical. If you want to be a wife of noble character, you should be industrious. You should be hardworking. You should do something as a wife. You should add up to the income of the house. Verse 14, she is like a merchant ship. Bringing her food from afar. Those of us who are living in Africa, Ghana to precise, if you go to the market on a market day, you will see that a lot of cars are coming from the villages bringing food. And that is what King Solomon compares the noble wife to. She is like the merchant's ship, bringing her food from afar. Verse 15 says, she gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plant the day's work for her servant girls. She wakes up before dawn, my dear. You see, I told you that being a wife is more of a responsibility than a testimony. It is a full-time work. You need to be prepared for it and you need to be available for it. And you need to know that this is what I am getting myself into and this is what I am ready to do. The virtuous woman wakes up at dawn, prepares food for her family. It also says she plans the day's work for her servant girls. So it means that it is not a sin to have a help in your house. If you need it, you should have it, but then you need to be more vigilant because these days people are 
making it very difficult for other people to trust them to bring them to their homes when you decide to have a help in your home you should also make sure that you treat the help well because the help is part of your household you can't have a help and then decide that the help cannot eat whatever you are eating no if you want to be a noble woman of good character you treat your help as part of the family and then you wake up at dawn you prepare your breakfast and then you give your your servants or the help the work that they are supposed to do in your family a 16 says she goes to inspect a field and buys it and her earnings she plants a vineyard my dear you can't be there and say your husband should do everything you should be dynamic you should be innovative you should be able to come up with good ideas that can add up to your husband's life that can enrich your family life so she inspects a field the wife will go to the field inspect it buy it and start planting it so my dear you can't be a wife and then be so reluctant you need to be innovative that virtuous woman is a full package on its own so verse 17 says she's energetic and strong and a hard worker if you want to be energetic if you want to be strong it means that you have to take care of your health you can't be doing everything without taking care of your health if she's strong it means she exercises if she's energetic it means she's healthy and she is a hard worker she makes sure her dealings are profitable her lamp burns late into the night so that virtuous woman is an entrepreneur she's an estate developer and she's a businesswoman. like she brings profit she makes sure that everything that she's doing brings profit so you can't just be wasting around excuse me to say you can't just be i'm going to my friend i'm going here i'm doing that wasting your time without it bringing profit whatever she does it is profitable and then her lamp burns late into the night so she makes plans for her family she when she's in the house everyone is okay i always say that you being the wife you are the manager of your home everything that goes on in the home you are in charge your husband is the ceo and you are the manager your husband is the head and you are the neck and you know that when you wake up in the morning and you have problem with your neck you feel pains in your neck you're not even able to turn your head so her lamp burns late into the night her hands are busy spinning thread verse 19 her fingers twisting fibers she's also a seamstress she does this with her hand in this economy you can't have only one source of income the woman of noble character didn't have one source of income she had other businesses she had different sources of income that she was doing to generate income to enrich her husband's life and the life of her children i always say that in africa in ghana the reason why there were a lot of widows who are poor is that wives refused to work those days wives took on the duty of a wife and refused to do other things that will bring them source of income if your husband is the only one who is doing everything as far as finances is concerned when there's a problem and then he's no more and his family is wicked you realize that you and your children will be wanted and so as a woman of noble character as a virtuous woman you can't have only one source of income you need to have different source of income you need to be innovative so verse 20 she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy she's also kind she's also generous and even as she's extending her her open hand to the poor the god bless you the smiles she's putting on people's faces brings one blessing to her and her household because i always say that when someone tells you god bless you it really works and it comes with a blessing of a full package so even as she's industrious even as she's taking care of her home she's also helping the needy and she's opening her arms she has no fear of winter for her household for everyone has warm clothes <laughs> so you you like you you are in charge of your family that is the duty of a virtuous woman a wife she makes her own best bread she dresses in fine lining and purple gowns you can't wake up and not lay your bed you can't make your bed um unattractive like she makes her own best bread oh god that woman is indeed a woman of good character and you and i can learn to be that verse 23 
Her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. So her husband is a leader. Her husband is part of the town elders. And if your husband is part of the town elders, you, you cannot afford to be disgracing him. You cannot afford to be like an ordinary woman. I am sure that if she was an ordinary woman, if she does her things anyhow, her husband will not even res be respected at the elderly meeting. And so you need to enclose your husband. You need to protect your husband. You need to let your husband look good in public. Verse 24, she makes belted lining garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. So this woman <laughs> is also a seamstress. This woman, she, she takes advantage of everything, like everything that she thinks will, be, will bring profit to her. She does it. So she's always innovative and she's always trying to do something. Verse 25, she's clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. Your husband cannot be part of the elders here. You don't have dignity. It means that she herself, she's been respected in the society and she's strong. She's healthy. She's like a full package, as I said, and she laughs without fear of the future, my dear. A happy wife is a happy life. She's, she, she has faith because she's a woman of faith and she's a woman of, she's also hardworking. And so she doesn't fear the future because when she, she knows that when she has God and she has a great husband and her husband is favored and she's hardworking. What again? Why would she have to be anxious of life? Because she's planning for the future. She wants me tomorrow. What will my family eat? Next week, what will my children wear? No, she always smiles. You have to be a peacemaker in your home. When your children see you, when your husband sees you, the smile alone should bring him peace. It should bring him strength. Let's continue. Verse 26. When she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. She doesn't just speak anyhow. She doesn't just be, she's not rude to her husband, to her children, to the people around her. She sees the words that comes out of her mouth. And the words that comes out of her mouth gives encouragement to other people. So if you are a wife, you have to season your words. You have to speak with kindness. Even when she's giving instructions to her servants, even when she's giving instructions to her children, even when she wants the husband to do something for her, she gives it with kindness. And this is something that you and I, we really have to learn. Verse 27, she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. You can't be a woman of good character and be lazy. You are multitasked because that is how God has created us. You can be cooking, you can be doing laundry, you can be attending to your kids, you can be doing a lot of things at the same time. And that makes you a virtuous woman. That makes you a woman of good character. And you cannot be lazy, my dear. In verse 28, her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. You can't be a woman of noble character. Your children will be afraid of you. Someone told me a story that some kids were playing. And then they saw that their mother was coming from the market. Immediately they saw her, they started running. And the man asked them, ah, why are you running? They said, mommy is coming. Even daddy is afraid of her. Like seriously? How then can your children bless you? How then can your husband praise you? It also tells me that if you're a husband and your wife is doing everything that she can, you have to praise her. You have to appreciate her. You have to, in fact, let her feel that whatever you, she's doing, you have seen it. Because women want to be seen and men want to be recognized. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. You have to stand out. You have to do amazing. And my dear, you cannot do this without the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Verse 30, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. You cannot be a woman of good character. You cannot be a virtuous woman if you do not fear God. 
Because when the fear of God is in you, the Holy Spirit will give you the strength to do all these things. I always pray that God give me the strength to be a great wife and a great mother to my husband and my children. And I can only do that with the help of God. You can only do that with the help of God. And so, yes, you have to look nice. Yes, you have to be beautiful. Yes, you have to take care of yourself. But you also have to fear God. Because it is only when you fear God that when your husband offends you, you can have the courage and the Holy Spirit to give you the strength to forgive him. Verse 31, to my husband, reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Sweetheart, you are an amazing wife. If you're a husband and your wife is trying as much as possible to be a woman of good character, sweetheart, darling, you have to be praising her, you have to be encouraging her, and you have to be appreciating her. But if you are also now planning to get married or if you are already a wife sometimes you also have to encourage yourself you also have to let the joy of the lord be your strength and you have to fear god so this is proverbs 31 the woman of good character or the virtuous woman as others will say i really hope that you've really understood this thing and i pray that the holy spirit will give us the strength to be able to do all these things and to be great wives and great mothers that we were created to be thank you so much for watching this video i really appreciate that you've stuck with me to the end please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that and click on the notification button and i'll definitely see you in the next video